And now for our new segment, the Midterms Minute, a look at the candidates and races that you need to know about, shout about, and support to make sure we have a blue tsunami on November 6th. In our last two segments, we spotlighted the Minnesota and Wisconsin primaries, which are both happening on August 14th. If you missed those segments, check out our previous episodes or visit bestoftheleft.com slash activism. Today, we'll round out the August 14th primaries with spotlights on Connecticut and Vermont. As usual, we're going to throw a lot at you, so keep an ear out for your state or district and check the episode notes for more details. There's a competitive Democratic primary for governor in Connecticut. Businessman Ned Lamont is the state working family's party choice and is running on criminal justice reform and a $15 minimum wage. His opponent is currently mayor of Bridgeport, but previously went to jail for seven years after being convicted of extortion and bribery while in office. Lamont is polling neck and neck with the expected Republican nominee. Politico has called this a race to watch because, as you may recall, governors elected this year will be involved in their state's redistricting process following the 2020 census. Connecticut's 5th District is another race where Republicans have a chance in November, and so the Democratic primary has been heated. But Johanna Hayes, the 2016 National Teacher of the Year, has grabbed national attention with her energy and inspiring life story. Unlike her opponent, she supports single-payer and has received endorsements that include the Working Families Party and AFL-CIO Connecticut. If she wins, she could become the first African American to represent the state. Connecticut's Democratic Party establishment has expressed concern about her lack of political experience, but she was drafted to run and has a strong ally in Senator Chris Murphy. If you're a Connecticut resident, your voter registration, whether online, mailed, or in person, must be received by August 9th. Turning now to Vermont, Democratic incumbent Representative Peter Welch is facing a primary challenge for his congressional seat, which is the only House seat Vermont has. A few months ago, it came to light that Welch received campaign contributions and bought and sold stock from the very companies lobbying for the prescription drug bill he championed. Thank goodness Vermonters have a choice. Doctor and veteran Dan Freelick is running a campaign primarily focused on campaign finance reform and anti-corruption that also includes Medicare for All, a Green Revolution, and other progressive policies. Also in Vermont, Republican Phil Scott, a first-term and well-liked governor, is up for re-election. As we've already mentioned, governorships are critical this year. In the Democratic primary, there are two front-runners. Christine Helquist is the former CEO of the successful Vermont Electricity Cooperative. She's running on a progressive platform, touting her leadership experience and utilities, and her campaign is the first ever in Vermont to organize a union contract with campaign staff. If she won in November, she would also be the first openly transgender governor in the country. Environmentalist James Ellers is the other primary frontrunner. He's also running on progressive policies, although the self-proclaimed provocateur has some strange tweets about unions and abortion in the past. He says his views have evolved since then, and the AFL-CIO has endorsed him. It's also worth noting that a 13-year-old, Ethan Sonborn, is another legitimate candidate in the primary race. Though he likely won't win, he's taking his campaign very seriously with a message that is all about inspiring young people to get politically engaged. Engaged. And finally, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, the most well-liked politician in the country, is facing two primary opponents. One is a self-proclaimed Clintonian and Obamacrat who moved to Vermont after the 2016 presidential election with the specific goal of unseating Sanders. The other is a farmer running as an independent with a focus on fighting climate change. He says he likes Bernie, but is concerned that his focus is too national and that he'll leave the office to run for president again in 2020. If you're a Vermont resident, early voting has already begun and you must be registered by primary day, August 14th, to vote in the primaries. We want to emphasize registration cutoff dates and absentee ballot request and submission dates are different for each state, sometimes even each county. We highly suggest reviewing your state's information and voter ID law restrictions at rockthevote.org as soon as possible to ensure you are able to vote in both the primaries and general elections. We know you heard a lot of names and dates today, but we hope you'll take a moment to check out the segment notes, which include all of the links to this information, as well as additional resources. And today's midterm Minute, just like every activism segment we produce, is archived and organized under the Activism tab at bestoftheleft.com. So if building the bluest of blue waves is important to you, be sure to hit the share buttons to spread the word about supporting progressive candidates across the country via social media so that others in your network can spread the word too.